levels of blight. Am I right about that? 20, 30, 40 years? We have before us one of the most unique opportunities, I would say, not just in a generation, but in a lifetime, to press the giant reset button for dozens of neighborhoods in Manesson. That's only due to local officials, state officials, and federal officials who have determined that these, this is the best way to spend ARPA money, right? We've got $10.4 million with the Redevelopment Authority to address blighted, vacant, abandoned buildings in Manesson, Greensburg, Jeanette, Penborough, Vandergrift, New Kensington, and Arnold. I think I got all seven of them, right? So I'm excited because this is about figuring out, as the mayor pointed out, what, are the, what is the next step? What happens when the ARPA money is gone? Now, I do want to give you a, a bit of background about what the ARPA program is about. Um, why are we here tonight? I want to cover that for sure. We're definitely going to cover that very early on. You're going to hear a lot of the same things over and over again. Uh, we want to talk about what the County Redevelopment Authority and Land Bank is doing in Manesson uh, and who is and what is Stromberg, Garrigan and Associates doing to help us in this process. Um, here's our agenda. If you haven't got a copy of that, uh, but that's basically what we're going to be going through tonight. Um, going to do a quick project overview of what the ARPA program is all about. Uh, SGA is going to give us a number of uh, case studies in vacant lot reuse and, and management techniques. Um, we're going to do some reflective group activities. So this is your chance to tell us what needs to happen on these lots, okay? All right, so why are we here? Uh, we're here to talk about the health of your community, and I don't mean that some abstraction. What I mean is Buildings that are blighted, vacant, and abandoned have a significant impact on the health and safety of your residents, right? So the cent uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention identified five social determinants of health. And I'm just going to show them all up here, uh, but let you know that we don't really work in all of those uh, areas. Uh, healthcare access and quality, education, community and social context, economic stability, and neighborhood and built environment. We as the Redevelopment Authority and Land Bank work in two sections of that pie, in economic stability and neighborhood and the built environment. There are strong connections between the quality of your neighborhood, the building stock, the, the infrastructure, and outcomes in people's lives. So what is the Redevelopment Authority doing? We are trying to turn every one of those blue dots into nothing. We are trying to address 300 plus blighted, vacant, abandoned buildings in Manesson. So what you see in the red area is what we're calling qualified census tracts. The federal government said we could spend money in these census tracts. There are 10 in the entire county in seven municipalities, okay? Every single one of those blue dots is a blighted, vacant, abandoned building. That's the scale of the problem that we're trying to solve in not 10 years, in not 20 years, in five years. The clock is ticking. We have less than five years. It's about four and a half years right now to do all of this work. What would your community look like without all those blue dots? Would it be better? Say yes. It would be a whole lot better, right? So then we have to figure out how do we take the next steps on these blighted vacant, on these, uh, vacant lots. So there's a bunch of eligible uses that we have with the program. We can spend money to acquire properties. We can spend money to do environmental testing. We, we are doing those things for asbestos containing materials and those sorts of things. Um, we can pay to have the properties demolished, of course. Uh, and these eligible locations are disproportionately impacted communities. That's how you got to be called a qualified census tract. Right now, to Manesson is at 319, 319 of those blue dots on that map. We know there's probably more. Uh, I think Marvin, did, we, did, Mar did Marvin slide in here? I thought I saw Marvin, no? Okay, Marvin sent me a blight report just today. So this list continues to grow. Despite all of our efforts to find all of these properties, we continue to find them because there's so many of them. Uh, Greensburg has 31, Arnold has 42, Jeanette has 64, Penborough has nine, New Kensington has 75 and Vandergrift has 22 for a total of 562 buildings 
that need to come down. Do you see how big your number is compared to everybody else? Yeah, it's quite a big, quite a big number. So the current pace of demolitions across the seven municipalities breaks out like this. Uh, 13 have been complete, 52 are under contract. I would note many of those that are under contract have already been raised. We just haven't finalized all of the processes that we have to to get the property uh, it's called complete. Um, one is uh, bid, 16 are prepared to bid, being prepared to bid, 16 are initiated, meaning we've gotten consent to demolish the property, and there's 453 waiting for us. Now, what does that look like in Manesson? Uh, we have five complete, 19 under contract, uh, zero bid, zero preparing to bid, 16 initiated, and 278 with potential. I would note that uh, that number initiated is gonna jump real fast. Uh, we're gonna be getting ready to make an acquisition through judicial tax sales. Uh, in July, so that number is going to jump real fast, and we're going to be hitting the ground running on those ones very soon. Okay, so what is Stromberg, Garrigan, and Associates doing for us? They're trying to help us ask some questions about what we want for our community, okay? Um, there are a lot of things that we're trying to figure out. This is not like we're just, you know, pulling in a bulldozer and just leveling an entire section of town and saying, see you later. We're trying to be thoughtful about this. We're trying to consider what can be done afterward, right? There's all sorts of considerations that we have to go through about what this means for your community. And that's why you're here today to tell us that because I can't guess. We can't guess what a community wants. We engage with the public. We ask you to engage with your neighbors, to deliberate, to be respectful and have a conversation civilly about what we can do on these lots, okay? So this is the main question, is what do we do when the ARPA money's gone? This money expires uh, four and a half years from now. So that's the big question. Um, we're gonna have hundreds of vacant lots. We have limited resources per, for public investment in those lots. There's only so much money out there that you can invest in a, a, a privately owned or even publicly owned vacant lot. So that's one of the confines that we have to work within. Uh, there's only so many, er, so many opportunities for a lot of the popular ideas about rain gardens or community gardens, um, learn, outdoor learning spaces, but we should consider all of them. But let's try to expand the palette. That's what SGA is gonna help us do, is expand our thinking about what these vacant lots mean now or could in the future. Um, we have a very soft real estate market in Manesson. Uh, a lot of the neighborhoods that we're doing work in, the median value of a given home is about $80,000. That's, that's taken into consideration the upper stuff and the lower stuff. Anybody wanna take a guess what it costs to build a new home today? 200,000, probably at a minimum, 300 maybe. So you've got, you know, 120 to $220,000 gap between what's going on in the rest of the neighborhood and what it costs to build a new home. And that's why a lot of these neighborhoods don't see new investment. There are market forces that push these neighborhoods the direction that they go. Um, this is true in every community in Westmoreland County. It is even true at the county scale, is there's a lack of capacity. Uh, I introduce you to half our staff tonight. There's six of us for a county of 350,000 people. We're, we're stretched thin. <laughs> Clearly, just by the numbers, we're stretched thin, right? So taking the next step, we rely highly on local partnership. The Nehemiah Project is, I hope, going to be one of those local partners that really takes this torch and runs with it to do something on these properties. Um, so the main goal of our study is to provide our communities with a guidebook for envisioning the reset of hundreds of blighted vacant uh, buildings, these vacant lots. That's what tonight is about, okay, is figuring out what can we do, and then SGA will help us uh, design a framework by which we can say we have to do this, then we take that step, then we take this step, right? And there's other communities that have done this. So that's the first step that, that Phil from SGA is going to enlighten us about, okay? Uh, I skipped some stuff, sorry. There we go, go ahead. Okay. You got yours, you can use this one. Yeah, all right. I think I skipped a slide there. There we go. 
Um, so I'm Philip Wu with SGA. We're the consultant uh, working on this project with the Redevelopment Authority and the Land Bank. And as Brian mentioned, um, the end result of this is going to be a workbook. It's going to be kind of a, you know, um, a book that f folks can can look at in, in all these different communities, and you know, decide what what the best solution is to vacant lot redevelopment. Uh, because vacant lots are not all created equal. Um, they're vacant lots that are, that are sandwiched between two homes. They're vacant lots that are, you know, a stretch for an entire block. So, and, there, and there's vacant lots and communities are growing um, or stable. There's, there's vacant lots and communities are in decline. So there's gonna be a different set of solutions for, um, you know, depending on what community you're in and, and what what the nature of the, the block or the lot is. So um, that's why we have to consider all these different um, you know, ideas. And you know, thankfully, <laughs> there, there have been other communities that have gone through the same thing and have, have successfully um, done programming that uh, re-energizes their vacant lots with new uses. Um, so one of the earlier examples um, that we have um, to look at is, is from Genesee County, Michigan, where, where Flint is located. Um, and the, the county there established their land bank authority back in 2004. So it's, it's, it's been, been around for almost 20 years. Um, they've demolished a lot of structures uh, over, over the time um, since 2013 through 2022, demolished over 5,300 structures. And their goal is to demolish 4,600 more. And residents there um, specifically said that demolition was their main priority um, above all else. Um, because when you, have, when you have structures that are you know, vacant and dilapidated, um, you know, there's all sorts of issues. You, you could have fires, you, know, you could have uh, you know, vermin, you could have um, you know, all, all sorts of things going on. Um, and sometimes demolition is the solution, as, as it is uh, you know, in, in some of the Westmoreland County communities here. So um, the Genesee County, um, their land bank partnered with the city of Flint um, to, to establish an ef you know, efficiencies that allowed them to demolish structures at 15,000, roughly 15,000 a structure, which is lower than the national average. And um, I believe in Westmoreland County, the, the numbers will be pretty close to that. Um, so in, in Flint, uh, they, they had seasonal crews, they had volunteers um, perform maintenance on vacant properties. So mowing, um, garbage pickup, um, yard, yard work, things like that. And uh, they're averaging 20,000 lots mowed per year. They also have a clean and green program, which is uh, a program that where they engage community-based groups, um, such as churches and 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 faith-based organizations, uh, where they where they give these organizations a stipend of three thousand um, dollars to help maintain a set of twenty-five vacant lots. Um, so this would happen every three weeks during the growing season. So roughly, um, I don't know two-thirds of the year. Um, and so they've been able to average um, 700 residents engaged, including 300 youth. Um, so that really, you know, that, that gets the neighborhood involved. It's, it's not just a you know, demolition process that doesn't uh, you know, have an end goal. It's, it's, it's really to, to get the community involved um, in, in their future. So um, they also have a side lot program. Um, they, uh, one, one thing that's uh, been really innovative in, in Flint is that instead of reseeding um, vacant lots that have been demolished with grass, they use clover, uh, which is a much lower maintenance um, ground cover, um, which only needs to be mowed once a season, really, and doesn't grow to the same height as grass. So um, there's you know, innovative things like that that um, you know, have, have, uh, have worked there. Um, and, and just like Western Pennsylvania, Michigan has a strong philanthropic network of foundations. And um, you know, they, they 
uh, Genesee County has, has really been able to leverage some of those relationships. And then uh, in Youngstown, Ohio, uh, their neighborhood development corporation um, has, has done several um, uh, interventions for vacant lots, including um, stabilization. So um, they, you know, they um, improve the lots, they, uh, they add split rail fencing, um, they, they get rid of weeds, hazardous trees, debris, foundation stones, et cetera. Um, planting two new street trees per lot, and this really improved the appearance. Um, you know, Youngstown, like uh, like parts of west west western Pennsylvania, is is not a hot real estate market. So, um, you know, even even if uh, they would like to have new homes, um, sometimes it's just not economically feasible. So, um, the solution is to to really think of ways to at least improve curb appeal, so that um, you know it so that the vacant lots are look well maintained. Um, they also have workforce development programs such as, such as market gardener training, where they train city residents in agricultural and business skills to develop food-based businesses. Um, and they also um, have done competitions that, where they engage design teams to come up with innovative ideas um, for the vacant lots and then uh, provide micro grants uh, to implement those ideas. Um, an urban farm is also something that's been done there um, that has uh, provided uh, uh, workforce development opportunities for city residents. Um, and they also have a demonstration block where um, there's a, a block on a, a street there called Mineral Springs Avenue um, that's highly vacant and they've, they've done multiple different types of interventions to see which which one works better. So, um, Down in New Orleans, um, that was a city that was obviously uh, devastated by Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. That left a lot of vacant properties all over the city. Um, so they really had a multi-tiered strategy there. Um, and you know, this is something I think we'll probably be looking at here in, in, in Westmoreland County communities. So areas with higher demands uh, higher market demand in New Orleans, the uh, redevelopment authority there auctioned properties to the highest bidder. Um, areas with weaker market demands, they worked with affordable housing developers to develop um, affordable housing. And areas with lower market demands, they um, had their side lot program, um, allowing residents to, to maintain a green space next to their homes for five years. Um, and uh, vacant lots with no market demand, they, they pursued a number of different strategies, such as um, uh, the Lots of Progress competition where um, a nonprofit uh, business incubator worked with um, the Redevelopment Authority um, to engage design teams in coming up with different ideas. So um, some of the ideas that were um, implemented include a, a pop-up produce stand, um, and uh, there was also a dog park that was uh, um, implemented by Rescue Center. Um, there's a pop-up food stand, so um, that one up there in, in the photo, which is, which is still there <laughs> in uh, 2023. Um, and the winners uh, received business coaching through um, the, the incubator and uh, options to, to buy the property af after leasing it for a while. So. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of a uh, lot of economic development, workforce development, um, tied to vacant lot regeneration. Um, another uh, competition held in New Orleans with the Redevelopment Authority um, engaged uh, design teams to think about vacant land as more than just single lots. So really, kind of think of it holistically, um, you know, to 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 really think about it in a broad-based manner that contributes to uh, community prosperity. So not, not just really thinking about in individual property owners' lots, but really how, how, does this, how, how does vacant lot redevelopment fit into the um, whole picture? So the uh, design team found that certain types of land uses zoned for light industrial dis distribution repair activities are critical to support industries that 
um, create living wage jobs, especially for workers without college degrees. Um, and one thing that uh, we've touched upon um, in our work with the Redevelopment Authority and Land Bank is um, a lot of communities um, in Westmoreland County have uh, zoning codes that date back to the 1970s, you know, 1980s, um, and do not necessarily reflect uh, modern land uses or, or flexibility that uh, we would like to see um, you know, for vacant lots to be redeveloped. So um, there's setback issues, there's you know, um, you know, yards that uh, require, um, or requirements that uh, um, necessitate larger yards than um, is, you know, is adequate for 2023. And um, there's just things like that that you know, we have to look at. So, um, so just up the road in Pittsburgh, um, they've, they've done a series of programs um, at the city level, including the Adopt a Lot program and the Vacant Lot Toolkit. So the Vacant Lot Toolkit, for example, is, is kind of a guide that allows um, folks who would like to um, use city-owned vacant lots for, for you know, any purpose, like, like food gardens or rain gardens or that sort of thing, to, um, to look at this you know, process diagram, basically, and, and, and know exactly how they, they need to go about things. Um, so the Urban Redevelopment Authority in Pittsburgh, they, they also have a land care program that um, engages small businesses and community groups to maintain um, several hundred um, URA-owned lots. And you know, that's, that's a way that they're um, looking to promote community engagement and workforce development. Um, there have also been a number of uh, studies done in Pittsburgh, um, including through a, a nonprofit called Grounded Strategies and uh, through Carnegie Mellon University that have looked at um, potential solutions. So there's a Mo to Own program that was proposed where um, residents can maintain publicly held or tax delinquent property, um, mow it for three years, and receive $25 uh, of credit every time they, they, they mow the lawn, basically. Um, and um, the maximum credit that they could get is $1,350. Um, and that goes towards their opportunity to buy the lot um, as a side lot or, or um, you know, additional property. Um, so, yeah, there's a, um, one thing we'll probably find useful here in Manesson and in Westmoreland County is um, categorizing the different types of um, vacant lots and you know, what to do with them. And, and the URA in Pittsburgh has uh, recommendations that are kind of along those lines. They have parcels that are designated hold. So um, those are parcels that are not immediately marketable. Um, develop um, parcels that are, are more marketable for redevelopment. Um, and green, which is parcels that are kind of in, you know, hillsides or, or along rivers or things like that. They're not very developable and you know using those for um, you know trails or or adding to existing parks so I think we'll find a that a, you know that type of classification similar to that could be useful here um, so again uh, the Carnegie Mellon University uh, they, they also have strategies that are you know based on classifications and again classifications are are uh, important to, you know, when, when you have so many vacant lots um, with so many different characteristics. Um, so gap lots, those are the lots that they characterize as those that are, you know, in the middle of residential neighborhoods um, that can be used as side lots that might not be good for, you know, um, new development that's not residential in, in nature. Um, consecutive lots, so lots that are, vacant lots that are next to each other um, those, you know, those have an opportunity for um, larger type of development than just a single family home. Blocks, uh, again, even larger in corridors, um, you know, where, where common uses uh, can be shared. 
So this is an interesting case study that we uh, looked at in uh, the Pennsylvania wilds, so about two, three hours north of here. Um, there's a little town called Tianesta, um, and uh, they, um, they had a fire in, in their downtown area that burned a number of buildings uh, on a single block. And um, it was back in like 2003, I believe, or 2004. Um, and they um, didn't really know what to do with the, with the lot. Um, so um, the county's industrial development authority came up with this idea where they wanted to do something on the cheap. And this only cost $40,000. Um, they, they took a bunch of um, garden sheds and put them together in kind of like a courtyard formation on this lot. And um, they, uh, they allowed businesses, like retail, uh, you know, food-based businesses, um, et cetera, to, to uh, rent these garden sheds um, as kind of like a pop-up outdoor market and, and an opportunity for uh, would-be entrepreneurs to kind of test their businesses out, kind of like a business incubator. Um, so, um, you know, it's turned out that this, uh, you know, this market village has become a, you know, tourist attraction um, because um, people like, you know, eating different things, uh, walking around eating different things and buying gifts and things like that uh, from artisans, from, uh, you know, uh, artists, restauranteurs, et cetera. Um, and, um, you know, folks go up to Tianessa to, to hunt, to fish, um, to, you know, to recreate outside and, uh, you know, they, they stop here to, you know, grab a bite to eat, to, to take a look around and, um, you know, th this, this is something that only costs $40,000. Um, and there's, there's, there's a wait list, uh, because it's, be it's been so popular, um, where um, they don't even have enough spaces for all the the entrepreneurs uh, to um, to uh, test test their businesses out. So um, it's a way that the the municipality has been able to generate revenue too. So you know through through rents of these garden sheds, um, and, and it contributes to the wider tourism economy and and what's an otherwise a very rural part of the state um, and. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been done through arts um, and through, uh, you know, local, local business. So, yeah, we're, we're at the point here where uh, we're going to um, do some activities, some group, group activities. Um, and, uh, yeah, we have some questions for everyone. Um, so we'll have uh, a set of questions for each table. Um, my colleague uh, Anna there has has those, um, and we're just going to spend about five minutes per question. We want uh, one um, one person at each table to to kind of be the scribe to to write uh, you know write the answers down for the group um, and to um, yeah <laughs> and to also speak on behalf of the group. And these are you know these are fun questions. They're um, but they they do. They do uh, g help give us uh, an idea of what's, uh, what folks would like to see on these vacant lots, how, you know, what ideas are, are coming up from, from the ground level, from, from uh, community members. So, um, Anna, if you would pass those around. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we have, uh, let's see. Yeah, we, we only have five packets. <laughs> um, so. Phil, I really don't need, you can give my packet to somebody else because my questions are going to be different than what we're going to ask for this one here. I'm okay. Uh, I live here and I know what the needs are. <laughs> All right. Um, Okay. Is there any table that does not have uh, a question packet? Okay. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> well, 
Well, if, if folks here want to participate, uh, you're welcome to stand around <laughs> any of the other tables that have the packet. Um, yeah, there's also an empty seat here. Yep. Uh, five minutes per question. So. Yep. Uh, so everyone, open up question number one. Hello. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Thanks for coordinating all these. <laughs> What if the neighborhoods have bad that you, you don't like? I mean, is there anything positive you can say about it, though? <laughs> well, then uh, that, that's, that's important to... I have to cut the grass. I don't get to do that much. Yeah. No, I'm killing myself in that neighborhood. I'm curious. What keeps you here? What keeps you here? Maybe that's another it's way of thinking about it. I don't have a mortgage free rent. Yeah. Okay, all I pay is the utilities. That's my mom's house. Okay. That's what's keeping me here because I'm not going in a high rise. That's yeah. Well, right now, we like it's a house. house. I like my house. Well, we like but the neighborhood's turning. Well, you can, you can say that you like your house. What? <laughs> you can say that you like your house. That, that's well, I that's do an answer. Like the house, but the neighborhood, no. And the people are mean. Mm. Some of them are nasty. Yes. Sorry to hear that. It's pretty nasty. Yeah, I complain to her. She's my friend. That's all she hears me. <laughs> <is complaining. laughs> she lives in a nice neighborhood. She does. Yeah, she's a lot nicer. Do you live up on the hill? No, here's where I live. I live in my yeah, she lives up on Fort Avenue. Okay. And I live down here on Delaware Street. It's got the last house on Delaware. It's a hill, and it goes clear up by um, the city park. Yeah. Yep. But I'm at the bottom. And I have a flat at home next door. And I have to cut the grass. And I'm 75 years old. You know, that's going against yeah. my health and everything. My name, my name, I, I can't tell you why I hate that neighborhood. Okay. Some of my neighbors are really Are there any neighbors uh, well, I like who um, you do like? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a few. Yeah, there's a, a family from Guatemala. They're in Huff Coast, Bobby. They're the nicest people. They want me in everything. Oh, wow. The rest of them, I needed a dollar. Let's put on the board and give you a dollar. That's how nasty they yeah. are. Yeah. That's why I don't like the neighborhood, but I like my house. Yeah. And I have guests in my house. I enjoy them. I keep the house clean. I cut my grass. I, I keep my place safe. But around me, it's just so busy. Some of them don't care. Yeah. And I don't like it. Are, are, are those folks who have lived in the neighborhood for a long time, or are they people who just, you know... People have just moved in recently, and yeah. some of them are with the Guatemala, is the best ones I have right now, because they're kind, they help me with money when I get it, and I didn't yeah. want it, and they insist, and they bought me an air conditioner. Love those people, and they're not American, they're from Guatemala. Right. That's the one that's how I feel. Oh, there, there you go. <laughs> But the American 
cents. I wouldn't give two cents. That nasty. Yeah. I stay in my. When, when do you think it. Uh, how, how long have you lived in your house? 75 years. I'm 75 years old. When, when do you think it started to, to get worse? Okay, when my mother was still alive in 2013, it wasn't bad. Then she died in 2013. My father is already gone. My brother lived in All right, uh, we're going to move on to the second question. So, opened up question number two. <laughs> it's like those mailers that you get. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What do you see as roadblocks to development, revitalization, and improvement in your community? What would you like to see on vacant lots in your community? So five minutes.
All right, question number three. Question number three. What are some businesses, services, or amenities that you think are missing in your community?
Okay, uh, we're, we're going to take a quick, uh, it, we're, we're going to do uh, some quick sharing here, uh, questions one through three. Um, so back to question one, what do you like and value about your neighborhood or community? Um, anyone want to chime in? Okay. Okay, we're table number three. Okay, everybody is in agreement at our table why they like their neighborhood, their community. They like the people, they like that it's quiet, and there's access to City Hall. <laughs> and don't forget church. And church. <laughs> We're in agreement with that table. We thought that it's a very friendly community with a lot of interaction. It has quiet neighborhoods, uh, good service organization. Our police and fire are most helpful. Uh, it has very good restaurants and a solid school district and a great park system. We are also in agreement. We value our neighbors. We love the quietness. We love the security that we have from our, police, from our police department. We love our neighborhood streets that are quiet, the convenience to shopping, and also the ease of travel to and from the area. Okay, um, really similar answers over here, but the neighbors get along, people look out for each other, there is a sense of community, a very giving community, an ethnic community, who care about their homes, uh, safe neighborhood, and great parks. We're just about the same. We said our, our, our neighborhoods are quiet. Um, we have a neighborhood watch, you know, that everybody takes care of each other's um, homes um, when they're, they're away, and the neighbors are all nice. So, um, you know, we agree with that. We are in agreement with the good neighbors. We like our neighbors. Everyone looks out for each other, surrounded by, some would say, normal families. Next to business and a mixture of diversity in the neighborhood. Um, great people who want to help each other, looking out for each other. and. I love that my neighbors are seeing a change in my neighborhood, <laughs> personally. So seeing the change and knowing the neighbors, and we're in agreement. Amen. All right, uh, question number two. Uh, what do you see as roadblocks to development, revitalization, and improvement in your community? What would you like to see on vacant lots in the community? Okay, so to answer part one of this question, what do you see as roadblocks to development, revitalization, and improvement to in your community? Money. Um, the lack of money um, to get these things done. Uh, lack of resident participation. Lack of business commitment and participation. Lack of employment. And current building codes. Part two, what would you like to see on vacant lots in the community? Solar panels, new construction, wind power, new or new and or expansion of, exist, of existing businesses, 
green space slash community gardens. Okay, for roadblocks over here, we put that in the past, the city uh, didn't promote new business, um, some perception from outsiders that there's not enough housing, especially for uh, family units, and we're not utilizing what is here. And then for the vacant lots, uh, just housing and green space. Uh, for our roadblocks, we said the roads in the city of Manessa are atrocious. Um, the other roadblocks is the appearance of some of the um, uh, uh, properties, you know, uh, high grass and dilapidated buildings. Uh, we have a large senior citizen population, which, um, you know, it, they, they have a hard time you know, with the upkeep of their properties. And um, one of the things that we thought uh, we would like to see um, uh, would be a dog park in the city of Manesson. Uh, we agreed with uh, a lot of what was said. Uh, number one, there's not a strong financial base in the community, no philanthropic organizations to turn to and no chamber of commerce. Uh, that could hey, organize number two table, number three table. the businesses. Okay. Um, we also agreed that community gardens and uh, curb appeal projects would be a nice starting point, and the use uh, the uh, using those yard sheds for pop up entrepreneurs sounds like a very interesting idea. Oh, we got a lot to say. Okay, um, what do you see the roadblocks to develop revitalization and improvement in your community? First, there needs to be a major medical facility here. Um, specialty stores, a laundromat, a bank, um, and we were also talking about the vacant lots. The vacant lots need to be revitalized, but if you're gonna put a $200,000 house in a vacant lot that's next to somebody's house that's 30,000 or 40,000, who do you think is gonna purchase that? Okay, so that's what it comes into when they start to develop this area. That's what a concern is. So you got to tell them what yeah. would work in these communities. Because just like we were discussing, if you put a $200,000 house in a neighborhood where there is a house that's $30,000, that's going to hurt our tax. That's going to help. It's going to hurt our tax base because somebody cannot pay yeah. the exuberant amount of taxes that Manesson has yep. that doesn't give us anything to show for it. Exactly. We're paying higher taxes than we do in other states. That it has a convenient downtown, a convenient stores where you don't have to drive 20 or 30 miles just to get some yarn. So there's a lot to do to oh, redevelop so. the state. We just can't talk about these little things. It's a you have to look at the bigger picture. So on these vacant lots, though, because that's what today's conversation is Correct. about: is these vacant lots. How do we springboard those vacant lots to be something that means something for the community? Okay, Bri, I have a question for you. What do you think an affordable house would cost? Uh, what what do you think affordable housing would cost? Say, for instance, if you took um, a street, um, let's see where you done tore down half the street. Oh, let's take Marguerite. There's only like one house on Marguerite. So you have at least 
a whole block. What would you start those houses prices at? Market prices to build new mm -hmm. is a minimum of two hundred thousand dollars. That's my point. I'm not saying that that's what you'd sell them at. But I do like I, I don't want to get off topic because we're taking it to eating into time of other people that have something to say here. Okay. okay well, look, we can go to chamber two. <laughs> Uh, a standard three, a standard three bed, two bath house today is a minimum of two hundred thousand so dollars, if, if not higher. Okay, what if you got someone like eighty four nine or, or three four two like habitat? These are all great ideas. Let's start talking about them. But let's let's share. Yes. Okay. So that's an idea. That's an idea of a potential vacant lot reuse. That answers that question. I don't know. What are habitat for uh, humanity houses going for? Well, what would be the bottom line of the cost? The bottom line would be we want to maybe charge an elderly person circuit this conversation but we have to keep moving okay so can we agree affordable housing like yes okay, yeah. great. let's move on all right affordable housing is what is affordable to a person in a certain income range so affordable for me is a lot different than affordable for Ron is different from affordable for Phil it's all determined by an individual. So there's not exactly one market, there's not one standard. There's generally homes are sold to homes that are sold under an affordable housing program have to be sold to someone at 80% of the area median income. And I shared those at your last town hall about what those figures looked at as, as individuals and as families. There's a sliding scale based on the number of people in that household. At the end of the day, it still costs. 200,000, so, so when I say affordable, there's a, there's a subsidy to those homes. That's just, wanna put that up, please, Amy. Okay, all right, we agreed on a few of those um, that were spoken of as well. Um, one of the things to question number one, um, somebody mission, mentioned that the same contractors are being used around here and that that's kinda like an inside click um, discouragement of people in the community, the lack of hope. No attraction to the city by the curb appeal and personal interest instead of community interest. Um, what would you like to see on vacant lots? Oh, I'm sorry, I think I, I missed one. There was also the lack of common, uh, the, uh, there was a lack of money and so resources used and there was uh, on the demos the rubble of the demo is now in the basement which also costs money to remove if you want to revitalize that that land and we have a I have a I have a vacant lot thing okay I'm thinking a little bit bigger than this I think that if every every area every community, every couple streets, every whatever, wherever, how much vacant lot there is. We would grow, okay, gardens, but I'm not just talking seasonal. I'm talking as a co-op. I'm talking that you do seasonal, but we get, we, that there would be a way to get build, two big buildings, one to grow year round and one to sell. And people that would, grow, we would do as a co-op so that everybody would benefit Plus, you would make rent of revenue where people come in. So you also people that can, people that do honey, people that bring in things as it's an additive for an attraction for all these areas to come into our city. Are you thinking greenhouses as well? Yes, that kind yeah, of situation, greenhouses. greenhouses. Yeah. 
in an area so that you have a, a you're doing this all year round plus people will bring in things that they're making pies so people have beehives honey uh, can canning people that can so you you would have your we'd have our own whole foods market store Question number three, what are some businesses, services, or amenities that you think are missing in your community? All the way back here. <laughs> what are some business, businesses, services, or amenities you think are missing in your community? Not to be personal, but my tailor shop. A primary care facility a real youth center, workforce development, and career training in blue collar, economic mobility, and handball courts, and real athletic and diverse parks. We also have medical facility, um, laundromat, there's a request for an ice cream and donut shop and a shoe store. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, we wrote um, there's no downtown stores. Um, we need a laundromat and we need more banks. Um, another suggestion I had too is I used to live in Latrobe and there used to be a hardware store in Latrobe. And the hardware store of course, you know, went under because of the fact that the, you know, you have the big box stores now and they couldn't compete. I went there a couple and it, it's been out of business for six or seven years, the place has been empty. I went there a couple weeks ago. There's a, um, uh, 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 what do you call it? a pickleball. Place. Somebody bought it and made it a pickleball. And they said that now they need appointments. So many people want to go and play pickleball that you need an appointment to get in there. So that's what we need. Like, you know, even if you have an empty building, you know, that somebody, yeah, the activity. Yeah. Well, you're right, wintertime, summertime. Uh, okay, uh, we, <clears throat> one couple here. Um, we need a vegan restaurant. We have seven restaurants. We've got a lot of Italian restaurants, but we need a vegan restaurant. And I think it would be a wonderful thing to have because we could all sample the food. Arts and craft shops, clothing and shoe stores, ice uh, and skating rinks. Uh, in general, we're speaking about um, uh, youth programs. We, we don't have enough uh, youth programs, especially in the summer. Uh, for children to go dancing and uh, uh, arcades uh, where they can play their, their safely play their computer games. So I, I'm not a vegan, but the um, idea of a vegan restaurant is interesting because um, there's not a whole lot of them around, so it's, it's possibly a way to get people, visitors in the community. Um, yeah, it's some. Yes, yeah, it's not something that's just uh, you know like a pizza shop that that you see everywhere. So. Okay. What else? What are the businesses? We've been covered basically everything yeah, that okay. we need. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have? Do you guys want to add something? Oh, yes, we do. Yeah. yeah. We're in agreement with the uh, hardware, the, the shoe store, clothing stores, theater, maybe something uh, fast food was mentioned. The co-ops, definitely all seasons. And we have a beautiful riverfront. 
we have a river here. So it'd be nice to see some usage of the, the property along the river. She's waving her finger at me. But that's what we said, so that's what we're going with. And, and, a, and a laundromat and maybe a youth activity center. And development of the marina. Make it more boats that would come into this area. Okay. And also, also like we talked about like a small manistee here years ago, everybody remembers the manistee. A theater, smaller theater, not a big one, but also um, a, a, a theater for putting on show plays you know, for, the, for seniors, for junior high, for elementary, for kids to get involved in a theater at Greensburg, a theater here. For the, like you said, you want something more for the children. because I don't know how many of you know, I'm actually in film and TV. One of the things that I had spoken to um, our mayor about was Manesson getting a studio here. The studio would generate jobs, um, not just from building it, but the uh, film companies and TV studios would come to Manesson because we would have a viable studio where they could do their productions. Um, we're union. Okay, and it would be a way to get the next generation of union um, carpenters, uh, seamstresses, costume designers, electric ga uh, grips and gaffers into the work field. Um, so as far as like what you're saying about, you know, plays and stuff like that, yes, but if you're going to do that, take it to the next step and make it open to a much larger community where the tax dollars will come and benefit Manessa. Like okay, I'm done. <laughs> so these are a lot of things you all want. <laughs> but seriously, how do those things happen? They don't happen because Ron Moser says, they don't happen because me and the redevelopment authority and land bank snap our fingers. <laughs> I wish it was that way, but we have to start thinking about how does our community, how does the community of Manesson build these things themselves? You know, it, it keeps coming back to this idea of the maker building. That's where those things start, right? Because the challenge of a lot of these buildings, as we know, is they're in bad shape. And to get it off the code, to get a business in there, it's like a million dollars. If you're, if you're just starting out as a business owner, you don't have that kind of cash. So starting small, it's all about resiliency and building in those next steps so what about towards that vision of all of these things. So when you have these visions, and you have my uh, perception of them happening, not these million dollar renovations, I'm talking small of whatever, things being built by these sheds or whatever, mm -hmm. buildings going up. You also have to have the banks involved in small business loans. Yeah. They have to start believing in the people, the younger people. People that already have the experience that can open something, yeah. that they can do these things, that they can show them a, a, a building plan, mm -hmm. a, a business plan, whatever you call it. But the banks have to start getting involved. Yeah. All right, so we're going to move on to questions four, five, and six. And these, these questions involve the maps here. So um, I put a map back there. Uh, one, one, of the, one, one of the tables here is going to have to share with another one. Um, oops, sorry. But uh, question number four, so uh, we, we have a series of dot stickers at each table um, in, in different colors. So we're going to start with yellow dots. So place a yellow dot sticker on the map to identify a place in your community where you think there's potential for redevelopment or revitalization. And then write down on the sheet what you think um, could be located at, at the dot.
number and then write down the number on your pad and say what yep. that is. about here. She's here and I'm here. There's yeah. nowhere to put a shop in this. It's yeah. all home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right no, here. we need to be working downtown because yeah, basically, right here. yeah, we're, we're going to be right there. Where's the downtown? We'll be right in here. Down, down okay. here, yeah. We're putting out a lot where you think a shop is. Oh, yeah, they tore a lot of buildings. And then there's the fire that just recently happened uh, oh, yeah, down that there. Smoke. Yeah, there's yeah. smoke. Yeah, right. You know where that's at? That's downtown here, but I don't know what street it was on. Those people that buy the dollar general or that Xfinity one. There's Xfinity and there's oh, one of them just worked. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was Boost yeah. Mobile and then something worked. else. One of them just worked. I don't know where that sat there. It's one of, the, one of these uh, cross streets here. It's, it's on uh, Donner? Yeah, it's yeah. on Donner. It's on Donner. It's on it's either second or. Uh, let me look at my uh, map here. Oh, we we can we can send one around. We we, we can send we can send uh, this map around to folks. When you say send it around, I want to know if I can get a copy of it. Yeah. Like, private. Oh, a copy. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. Do I do that? Give you an email. Yeah. Uh, send send us an email. We'll we'll get one. Okay. Um, but it's my car here. Yep. So I, I think it's at um, at Fifth, right? Yeah. Is that Fifth Street? That's first, that's second, first, third, second. fourth, fifth. So that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So that's why I can't even give up. Wait a minute. We have trash. Is that Fifth Street there? I think it's uh, I think it's right there, yeah. that, that yeah. corner there. Yeah. Yeah. Because my neighbors are nasty. <laughs> no, 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 I don't want to get shot. 
No, I did it for No, I'm serious. There was a woman and her boyfriend selling drugs. They did it for 10 years and the cops let him go. And they hate my guts. All right, uh, question number five. Question number five, place a red dot sticker on the map to identify the place in your community that you feel has experienced the, the greatest need or the most disinvestment. Yeah. Yeah. Fuel has the greatest need, yeah. If there's a lot of places, that think of you know, the top place. Yeah, my house. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you liked your house. <laughs> I like my house. Yeah. The neighborhood's terrible. Then, uh, People aren't friendly, and it's dirty there, and I've called the code enforcement. They won't come up and, 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 and try to fix it. I keep my house clean, but the rest of it's filthy. Filthy. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just listening in. Yeah. I'm trying to say that they should, they should, from an essence, just from an essence tax base, uh -huh. they should, um, instead of tearing down some of the houses, they should take some of the houses that they can find that's next to the lots, and take them lots and add them to, fix the houses up and take the lot and connect it to the house, you know, put a, a fence around it and have that house and that land together, you know, and so whoever buys it or whoever rents it, you know, it's more appealing, you know, because yep. people have kids or something, yeah, that can be their home, you know what I mean, and they can they can either sell it to these people, or they can, more or less, I would think they should rent it to them, and that can be, that can be for the tax base, yeah. yeah. Manesson can have, not West Cornyn County, Manesson, it would help their tax base, right. <laughs> and yeah. I think that that would be something really good for them. You know? Yeah, it could be like a rent own situation. Yeah, and it would just be for like Manessens, just to keep their, you know, help the taxes go up. You know what I mean? And he was talking about, uh, you know, like buying how much, the, you know, how much money was to build a house. Well, you don't build the house, you just find some of these houses that that can be saved. You know what I mean? That way you're not spending a whole bunch of money, but the house can still be nice and it'll even look better, you know, with the yard. And some of these people need yards. They have dogs. You don't have to worry about the dogs running around no more. Kids can stay off the street. You know, I think it just would work out a lot. You know? Yeah, I think the idea is that if, if the house is, you know, in good enough shape that it can be repaired, def I mean, definitely should keep the house. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a lot cheaper to, to renovate an existing house than it is to build one from yeah. scratch. So. Because, I mean, a lot of the ideas that they're saying sounds great, but I live in that area. Yeah. A lot of them ideas is not going to come to that area because it's not attractive. You know what I mean? It's not attractive. You have to make, you have to start off making something attractive to bring attraction you know what I mean yeah. so some of these places have to you have, some of these places the people that live there have to it's going to have to start with us up there that live there so you have to make us feel comfortable you have to make the people up there feel comfortable it's going to be them people that live there that's going to do all them things that you're saying yeah. them, I'm, I mean I'm not trying to be rude or anything these people here are not going to do that because it's not in their area. Yeah. They're listening to this. Yeah.
but they might do it up on there, area, yeah. and it's going to, they're going to, all the stuff that you're hearing, they're going to do it up there, and we're going to still deal with the light down here, you know what I mean, so, yeah. it's going to have to start, it's going to have, you know, it's going to have to start with somebody fixing some of the houses, giving the stability to the people. Well, have you heard of the Nehemiah Project? It's my pastor. Yeah, they, it's my pastor. It right sounds here. like yeah. sounds like they're kind of uh, thinking along those lines, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll actually uh, talk about that uh, after these questions. Uh, they'll they'll have a bit of a, yeah. you know, okay. update on that. So. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, last question, green dots. Place a green dot sticker on the map to identify what you believe is the greatest economic or community asset in Manesson. So think, think positive here. put as many as you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, write, write down the ideas on the sheet, too. <laughs> so you said, uh, you get some good from Sally Amster. Oh, we want to start. Okay. Yeah. That would be helpful. Uh, Southwestern. Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. H. Mm -hmm. 
SPHS? SPHS. Wait. Yeah. SPHS. SPHS. Okay, one more minute. Listen, a lot of stuff there. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's always a good thing. Yep. Yeah, we do have a very nice library. The Civic Center with all the activities for the kids, school building, uh -huh. brand new. And the Civic Center, and Douglas has all the different programs that they have down there. Uh, the St. Vincent the Park, plus the Vanessa now has that free store. Free store, okay. Yeah, yeah. His place, the restaurant, really, it's about the rest of the restaurants. Yeah. The Fireman Hall for rental, you know. Center. 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 The, the whole key center. is the whole key is if we just get the blight out of here, everything's gonna come back. That's the that is it, you know. Mm -hmm. Landmark's still down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go back to question four. Um, who wants to share their answer for question four? A place in your community where you think there's potential for redevelopment or revitalization? Okay. Hey, why did you put a pretzel in my mouth? Right down where it could be local businesses, local businesses in downtown, low cost housing for seniors, and a veterans center locally in that area, the downtown area. We have our vegan restaurant site. Yeah, it's on uh, Donner. Just down here from the uh, where the uh, pawn shop was. Okay. Yeah. But you're gonna open that, right? Very good. <laughs> and we were saying that some of the senior citizens can't get to the grocery stores, so if they had little local grocery stores in some of the communities, you know, where people actually live, yeah, little convenience stores. Uh, we also have, sorry, Brian, downtown, um, but there are some other areas in the community where there's going to be large-scale demo where there could be potential redevelopment, but what is really needed or what I keep hearing um, is a medical facility, so something easy to access um, for that. We were even thinking that somebody could build us a little boutique hotel. Would that be downtown? That would be down by the boat launch.
All right, uh, moving on to question five. Um, the place in your community that you feel has the greatest need or experience the most disinvestment. Anyone want to go? Downtown. Downtown? Okay. Is there anything uh, there in particular, or is it? Uh, it's like literally the whole area. Right there. Okay, that that block. That whole block. Okay. Okay. Who wants to come? We basically said there were neighborhoods that were forgotten. Um, one of the neighborhood areas is over where um, Delaware, Indiana, Rebecca, Ben Franklin area, up on that, that whole area over there has been forgotten. Um, Lenaway, oh, that's a, it's like a forgotten place, Manessa. Um, another place where, um, is up uh, where above 9th Street Park where you have 10th Street Highland Manor, Knox, t um, you have 14th Street Reservoir Division, just totally forgotten, total blight, road conditions are bad, just, and people are living amongst that. Those are two major areas of Manesson that have totally been forgotten and nothing done. And, and, and it's like if you don't live there, you forgot all about it. And it really broke my heart when I went over to take someone home to Ben Franklin Apartments and I had to go up on that one road. I stopped in the middle saying, what's better to do, to turn around or keep going? Because I didn't know what was going to happen to my car. And I said, we ought to stop. We're complaining about our roads, where I live and where you live. We have no right to complain. Those folks live there, and they have to take their cars on those roads. The danger of tearing out that bottom. You know, until we see how other people live, we'd have no right to complain. And that's a Manesson. What I mean by that, Linda, is we're complaining about our areas, and theirs are 10 times, 15 times, 20 times worse than ours. We have a right, but they are in worse position than us. Well, we complain about our individual. Right. Problems. We're complaining about our whole Okay, well, that's fine there. That's fine. Right. But that's, if, as long as it's for everyone, right. Correct. Right, as long as it's for everyone. Because the thing is, a lot of times it's not for everyone, and it needs to be. then it's all of Manessa. But unless people know, if people don't know what's going on in this, in her neighborhood, if they don't know what's going on in my neighborhood, then you cannot speak up for all of Manessa unless you know everything that's going on. We've enjoyed these city council meetings for a very long time. This is the most people we've ever had at a meeting. But a lot of so them are out of town. Yeah. A lot of them are out of town. Yeah. And I can oh, tell yeah. you, as a I'm always working, so unfortunately, because my business burned down, this is the first one I can actually attend. Okay, so everyone has their life. Everyone's working or traveling. Or the one. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 in the paper correctly. Okay, you, are we on question six or five still yet? Okay, we said the same thing. Ninth Street um, is really bad, like that area down, you know, Ninth Street. All right. So, question six: uh, Where do you believe is the greatest economic or community asset in Manesson? Anyone want to volunteer? Okay. All right. <laughs> Let me uh, come around here. <laughs> Now I have a whole list here. These are the things that we really, you know, we're, we're real Manesson people, so we really like Manesson. So these are the things that we really think Manesson, the gems of Manesson are. The library, the, the city of Park, uh, the Civic Center, uh, our uh, Manesson High School, senior, uh, the senior high school up there. New building. Brand new. new building. Um, Douglas School's pro, uh, program that they have, that the, you know, they have all different kind of uh, programs there. St. Vincent de Paul, uh, Manesson Free Store, 
his place and all the other restaurants that we have here in Manesson, um, Manesson Fireman's Hall uh, where you can rent, um, the Senior Center, and all the different churches that we have in Manesson. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone uh, else have answers for this? They're all from Manessa. And we know more about Manessa than most people that are out of town, outside of town. I just want to get it clear. She said it perfectly. We've been in Manessa a long time. A lot of people come in here from outside of Manessa. They're here a year, six months, two years, and they don't know what's really going on. And politically, I'm sorry, Ron, it's terrible in this city. And that's the people here pay the price. The community is good. Let's. And I don't see a councilman other than you. Let's, yes. let's focus on positivity. Let's focus on the fact that there are people here who might not live here. That's a, a good thing, because I think the city needs help. And you're going to need it from all types of people. So anybody who's here tonight, thank you for coming. Because right, it's important here, yeah. that your conversation it's is good here. That we have it yes, here. Absolutely. But they're not being transparent at a regular monthly meeting. Phil, let's move here. on to the next question. All right, so uh, we have a project update on the Nehemiah project. Uh, did someone here want to give an update on that? Okay. Yes, uh, the Nehemiah uh, NMCDC Community Development Corporation. It's alive and well and uh, uh, doing foundational things. We haven't pulled any rabbits out of a hat yet, but we're resolute. Uh, most of the guys on the board are pastors, and so uh, we want to communicate with the people. We're, we're just doing some foundational things, uh, documents that we need to identify with the government, uh, corporate uh, articles of incorporation, that sort of thing. And so uh, we just recently formed uh, uh, several committees, uh, a financial committee, a community relations, and a government relations um, uh, wings of the, of the corporation. So uh, things are well underway, and that's uh, about the best I can tell you. That's the latest uh, thing that we've done there. I'd say a round of applause for what Nehemiah Project is trying to do. Thank you. Because it takes community organizations to make these things happen. All the things that we're talking about tonight they don't just happen. You have to have organizations. You have to support those organizations. How do you do that? You volunteer your time or your treasure. Those are the ways you can help the Nehemiah Project take the next steps. They're going to need help. I have heard that the Nehemiah Project would like to take on a lot of these ideas, but they're going to need help. So I'm asking, as somebody outside your community, get involved in the Nehemiah Project. Find a way to be engaged. Time or treasure are things that are very valuable for a fledgling organization. Those are the things that make the difference in a large community, or CDC. They are the they are the thing that moves progress in your community. I'm not apologies, Ron, and apologies, Lois. You've got big jobs managing the city. Also doing all the community benefit operations. You can't do it all. You can't. That's why you need a CDC to help you, okay? So, Phil, sorry, I just wanted to point that out. Okay. So in the last few minutes we have, I uh, just want to go over what the next steps are here in this process. So, um, Manesson is the first of the workshops that we're holding as part of this process to uh, look at vacant lots in, the, in Westmoreland County communities. Um, so next week we'll be uh, in uh, Jeanette and Penn, Greensburg, um, Vandergrift, and New Kensington and Arnold. Um, so from what, you, uh, what everyone here has provided tonight, we're gonna collect the feedback, um, everything on your sheets, everything that we've heard, um, all the notes that we've taken, and synthesize that into a summary of, of um, of comments and report report back to all of you. So if, if you had to, uh, if you signed in uh, with your email address, we'll we'll send you updates. 
Um, and we're also going to be talking to municipal contacts and, and, and doing key person interviews. So hearing directly from council people, uh, you know, from, from, uh, from the mayors, et cetera. Um, and then we'll be uh, drafting a report um, that um, makes up what the workbook is that, that we discussed uh, at the beginning of this. Um, the workbook that, that has you know, recommendations, has um, you know, ideas, um, and they'll, they'll be pulled not only from these case studies from other communities, but also everything that uh, we've heard tonight, uh, what, what the needs are in Manesson, uh, what, what folks would like to see on vacant lots, um, you know, businesses that are missing in, in the community, um, those sorts of things. Um, and then finally, we'll, we'll report to the county um, and the individual municipalities on, on the findings um, on all of this. So this is a pretty quick project. Um, you know, we're, we're planning to, to, to do this uh, over the summer here. Um, you have a question? Okay. Sure, it, it is a corporation designed to um, eventually construct affordable housing in the areas where uh, blighted housing is being removed. And so we have lots of work ahead of us to, to uh, partner with uh, uh, people, builders, and financial sources. We, 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 we wanna uh, check with other cities, pick their brains of, of successful Nehemiah corporations. This is not the only place it's been done. It's uh, major cities like Baltimore, Chicago, East Brooklyn, New York. Um, it's actually happened, and they've, they've reclaimed large tracts of land and established homes where uh, people can buy homes, not just, not just rent, but actually buy a home so the pride of ownership uh, transforms the, 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 so the fabric of the town. So uh, it's, it won't happen overnight. We're looking at this as being a generational thing, actually. We want to kick this off and get it going as fast as we can, but we want it to go into generations to come. Uh, so it is basically to build affordable housing that people can buy and own. That will come. So, yes. so I, I want to just provide another bit of like next steps here. Um, part of the reason, part of the reason why we engaged in this effort with you tonight is because we met very early on with the foundation community. I I had conversations with about four different foundation leaders in the Pittsburgh region. And they said, we love what you're doing to take down all these blighted, vacant, abandoned buildings, but we don't know what we can fund. You gotta come to us with solid plans and ideas about what these communities want. So this report, I can go to a foundation and say, this community wants this thing right here. They've got a group called the Nehemiah Project, CDC, who can make this thing happen, whether it's affordable housing or something else, or maybe there's another individual in the community who wants to do something. We can then take those ideas to the foundations to get the money necessary to make those things happen. Maybe like $40,000 from some Pittsburgh foundation to do a maker village, right? These are ideas that are possible. But we've got to be able to engage with you to tell us what you really want and who's going to actually do those things. So at the end of this thing, you come to me and you say, hey, that vacant lot you own on 6th Street, I want to do this with it. Okay, great. We'll figure out how we can go to the foundations and ask for that money to make that thing happen. That's what all of this is about, okay? So I just wanted to point that out. You had a question, ma'am? It's a very complex question as it relates to rehabbing these properties. It is extremely costly. And first thing you have to have is title to that property. So the land bank can do that. I can tell you we have oh, about $200,000 on an annual basis to do that kind of work. It doesn't go very far, as you can imagine. $200,000 is not a lot of money. But we do projects that are about $100,000 each. So it's two units a year, possibly. There's not a lot of funding out there for rehabbing these properties, unfortunately. And you have to do it at a subsidy, because as we pointed out, 
you fix it up, you can only sell it for ninety thousand, even though you've already put a hundred. Well, that's. Uh, the city wouldn't be a good. They're, they're not a good. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> they're just not built for it. Just like you wouldn't hire your attorney to paint your nails. You know what I mean? It's like the same kind of thing. A lot of CDCs do own and rent housing. So, yeah. 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 No, yeah. It, it, I totally agree. Yeah. 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 Ma'am? Yeah. I wouldn't know. That's not a question for Brian. That's a question for Mayor Nelson. And City Well, I, I, again, I, I don't want to keep you all uh, any longer. I appreciate your time. Phil, are we all wrapping up here? Yeah? Okay. I just want to make sure we're getting out of here at a decent time. Um, I've got my kids at home. Uh, my, my, my mother's watching the kids, so I need to get home at some point, too. So thank you all again for your time. Um, feel free to reach out to me. I've got business cards up here. Phil's got his business card over here if there's anything you want to add. Again, how do we reuse these vacant lots to leverage opportunity in Manesson? That's the question, okay? Yeah. Sure.